America is absolutely and utterly fu- Hey bro, how are you? This morning, I'm heading to the gym to maintain my muscles, put on some workouts, and uh, I'm feeling quite sick, quite ill, so I didn't sleep last night, just a sore throat, feel a cold coming on, a bit of a cold. So I'm not gonna be able to push the weight so much in the gym. I'm uh, just gonna do some light calisthenics, handstands, handstand walking, handstand push-ups, and I'm gonna do maybe just like two sets. <laughs> two sets of pressing, uh, bench pressing, and then also two sets of curls, some kind of curls for the biceps. And I think that that's all I can do. At least I'm gonna trick myself and say that's all I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna get to the gym and I'm actually gonna feel it by the time I get through two sets. A little psychological trick, a little reverse psychology on the old self. Last night we had quite quite an episode with my son. Even if you don't have kids, I think you'll relate, you'll understand this, all right? My son was being a little bitch, for lack of a better word. <laughs> and we, we had a, a teachable moment that I wanted to share. We were about to watch a movie. It's Christmas time. We're gonna watch a Christmas movie, Elf, if you know it, one of the best Christmas movies of all time. And then we set it up, we rented it on Amazon, about to watch it, and I said, okay guys, let's watch it, but let's clean up, let's clean up the house before, before, let's clean up your room, clean up your Legos and toys before we get there. And, then, and my son starts going, oh man, but we're about to watch it, I don't wanna, and he starts whining like this, right? And I said, I said, buddy, you're gonna clean up or we're not watching the movie. He's like, oh, but we're about to watch. I just want to watch the movie. And I say, buddy, if you whine one more, for one more second, we're not watching the movie. <laughs> and I say it like this, very stern, but in a loving way, in a calm way, not in an angry way. It's like, buddy, if you don't, if you whine one more time, we're not watching the movie, right? And so he drags his feet to the, to the Lego room. He and his sister are cleaning up, starting to clean up. And I hear them starting to bicker and whine, right? So I walk into the room. I start, I, I look at them. I look at them dead in the eyes just to watch and listen. And he's whining to his sister, like, you do it, you need to clean it, right? As siblings do, little kids. And then he sees me there watching, he gets upset at me, throws a little leg at me, right? And I'm like, okay. And so I walk over to the computer, close my laptop, and I say, I bring it upstairs and say, man, I really want to watch that movie. Too bad. And I bring it upstairs, right? And my son flips out. <clears throat> He gets really emotional. <clears throat> he starts, you know, he knows he's not gonna get the movie back. So he goes to my wife, the safe haven. <laughs> he goes to my wife, he's like, Papa's the worst, Papa's so mean, all this stuff, right? And then he starts going off my wife and getting angry at her. And then that's when I, I can't have that, not in my house. And so I grab him I say, buddy, you cannot talk to mom like that. And I put him outside, close the door, lock the door. It's cold outside. And he's out there for a good three, five minutes, screaming his head off, bloody murder, banging on the door of the window, almost shattering the window. He's smashing it with his hand. He's like, ah, he's screaming, right? And so I just kind of look at him through the window and I, and I let him, and I open the door and say, buddy, are you ready to calm down and talk about this? And then he, uh, he comes in, he's still upset, he's crying, he goes to mom, of course, for safe haven, <laughs> for safety. And then they're, they're arguing, all the bickering starts, all the arguing starts about who's right and who's wrong and everyone's saying this stuff. And I just listen and I, and I, I very, tr very calmly, I try to just calmly listen and, and then I snap and I say, Kojin, shut up, mommy, stop, look at me. And everyone looks at me, right to me. And I say, why did I turn the computer off? Why did I not let you guys watch the movie today? Even though I wanted to, even though everyone wanted to watch Elf, why did I stop the movie? And of course they didn't answer. I said, it's because you're being entitled and not grateful. And I will not allow, I will not tolerate entitlement in our house. It is a privilege, it is a blessing to watch a movie as a family together, to watch a Christmas family. And you're being ungrateful and you're being entitled. If you were being grateful, and I looked at my son, I said, if you were being grateful, you would do absolutely anything to watch this movie. You would clean the entire house head to toe to watch this movie. If you're entitled, you'll be whining the whole time about it. And you'll say, oh, it's not fair, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why I stopped it. Because you will not, I will not raise entitled children, right? And of course, they're like, oh, it's too harsh, you know, whatever, whatever. And I said, guys, and I looked at them and I asked them the question, who is going to teach you guys this lesson if I don't? 
And I started, cur this is when Uncle Benji comes. I said, who said, who the fuck is going to teach you guys this lesson about gratitude and entitlement if I don't? This is my job. If I do not teach it, who is going to teach it to you? Hmm? The school? The internet? Some other dude? Your mom is not going to teach this to you. Your mom is not going to give you this lesson. Your grandparents are not going to give you this lesson. It's your father's job. And I don't care if you hate my guts. This is what I'm going to teach you. And you're going to remember it the rest of your life. And that is how you leave a legacy and you leave an imprint on your children. And there's not enough of this going around these days. There's not enough fathers that will stand up even though it's hard. It takes a lot of courage to do that. It's really hard to say something like that. It's really hard. But I will not stand for it and I will not let my kids be, well, I will not tolerate them being entitled, all right? And so they calm down and later that evening, <clears throat> as I always do when I'm stern, I always try to balance it with some kindness. And I say, go give your mommy a hug. Give her some hug, let her embrace you. Right, because they're feeling, both the kids are feeling, the older kids are feeling really distraught by this experience. And then later that day when I'm putting them to bed, we're talking about this, reading books together, and I'll hold them while, before we go to bed, while we're in the bed together, while they're falling asleep. I'll hold them, I'll kind of scratch their back, comb their hair with my hand, and we'll talk about this stuff. I'm gonna say, do you understand why we're doing this? Why I need to teach you this? Because nobody else will do it. Nobody will teach you. And I will not live my life with, with an opportunity to teach my children something important and just let that pass by me. Even though it's hard, even though you will hate me for it. Short term. But in the end, when you have your own children, when you're an adult and you're matured, you'll be nothing but grateful for these hardships. Because life is too easy. Life's too easy. If all you can do is just watch a movie every day, Christmas movie every night of the week <laughs> until Christmas for an entire month. Easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. It creates entitlement. And we can do all that, but as long as you are maintaining gratitude in your heart and you're recognizing that this, this is a blessing, this is a privilege to have this. The internet is a privilege. And so the overall lesson here that I'm realizing is that the reason we're struggling so much as men it's because we didn't have fathers, for the most part. Most of us did not have fathers that would do that kind of thing to us. That would give us that lesson, that would bestow upon, upon us the hardship that is required in order for us to grow. I'm not saying that hardship is through the requirement, but it is through hardship. It is through the struggle. It is through biting our teeth and pushing through it that strong men are made. And men of integrity are made. Men with moral code are made. Men with a conscience are made. And if I'm sometimes a little harsh to my kids, that's why my wife's there. My loving wife who will embrace them, who will say, it's okay, I still love you. That's what they need. But sometimes that's not gonna be me. Sometimes I'm gonna, I gotta whip, in, whip them into shape. So, that was the lesson from yesterday. I love you guys. And uh, please know that you're loved. God loves you infinitely. And we're gonna get to the gym. We're going to do some coaching calls with some godly men today. Some men that are struggling with their sexual addictions, sexual integrity, struggling with bad habits, even though they, they don't want to, even though they believe in faith and they believe in something bigger, believe in something better for themselves. They have a vision for their lives, but they still are succumb to addiction. They succumb to sin. They succumb to all the stuff that they don't want in, our mod in this modern world. And they're confused, quite frankly. They're confused because they're walking in one direction and then suddenly they move in another direction. And they're like, why did I go in that direction? I'm gonna stay on this direction. And then the next thing they know, they're going in a different direction. And it's like, why do I keep saying I'm gonna go this way and then before I know I'm going this way? <laughs> it's confusing to people, right? And so that's what I'm helping people do, is figure out what are the things that you're doing with your day, with your life, with your priorities and your focus that is, that is just distracting you from your focus, from your goal. And it's making you go off course, course correct. You gotta always course correct to where you wanna go. And that's the ultimate question that, that we can ask ourselves is what do I want with my life? Because there's nothing that you can argue against that. If you say, this is what I want, or this is what I don't want. There's no argument on planet Earth that can counter that. There's nothing. 
It's like, I want to be a man that doesn't use my dick for myself. I want to use my, my dick, my sexual organ, my sexuality, my energy for my wife, for, uh, for, for God. That's what I want to do with my sexual energy, right? I don't want to be a man that doesn't masturbate to oblivion, that just watches porn, goops around online. That's not the man that I want to be. And I've always never wanted to be ever since I was a teenager. It's like, I don't want to be that guy. And everyone, every time someone was like, oh, it's fine, just do what you want. It's natural to masturbate, it's normal. I was like, well, I don't want to be that guy. Conversation over, done. There's nothing you can say. I don't want to do it. And so the most important thing is your own opinion. The most important opinion is your own opinion. What do you say to yourself, about yourself, especially when no one's looking? And so this is the same reason I don't drink alcohol, all right? People ask me sometimes to drink. Do I drink? Going to parties, whatever. I don't drink. People are like, why? I say, because I don't want it. I don't want to. They're like, but why? And I say, well, because I don't want to. <laughs> but why? I just don't want to. Like, there's literally no religious or moral or uh, faith-based reason why I don't drink alcohol. I just don't want to. I just have... And I have to break it down for people. I literally have zero desire to drink alcohol. There's nothing in my blood that says, I want to drink alcohol, therefore I just don't do it. And so that's how it has to become for behaviors that we don't want to do in our lives, like phone use, like social media use, like all the stuff that we waste our time online with, right? We have to get a place where it's just like, I just don't want it anymore. It's, it's gross. It's grotesque. It's gratuitous. It's egregious. It's horrendous. I just don't want to do it. And then when you've done that, you've struck gold, you've, you've won, you've dominated, because you are living an abnormal life. If you can go against the grain and say no to all the stuff that everyone's like, yes, 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 more, 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 and say, I don't want it, it's not me, I don't want that, that's not the man I want to be. If you can do that, you, are be, you will be of the 0 0.11, 0.001% of men on this planet because everyone is struggling. Everyone is struggling with this stuff. All right, let's hit the gym. Back to it. All right, finished the workout. I only did one set. <laughs> Handstand push-ups, presses, walking handstands, barbell curls. I did one set of each. I'm not feeling great. Body feels weak, didn't sleep, feeling sick. It just wasn't happening. But I'm glad I did it because I feel better, I feel energized, ready to take on today. Henry Cavill. Here I come, Superman. <laughs> Heading home, spend some time with the wife and kids. I'm trying to balance this drive that I have to get stuff done, conquer the world, and make an impact and help create a, a world of godly men that I'm so convicted in, but also trying to balance that with a home life, taking care of my kids, making sure my wife feels taken care of and loved, just sitting on the floor with the children and playing Legos and having conversations and drinking tea and, and having cookies together. So it's a balance, it's sure, surely a balance. I was having a conversation with a guy that I'm coaching, I'm mentoring, and he was saying, he's from Europe. Uh, he's from a European country, Hungary, right? And he was saying, I was like, oh, America is so, so fantastic. I wish I could live in America. And this is where I flared up and my antenna went up and I was like, you don't wanna live in America. And this, is, this might be controversial to say, and this is very starkly different from what I used to believe. America is the greatest country in the world. It's fantastic, the freedom, et cetera, et cetera. Recently, I have changed my mind on this. I think it has been the greatest country in the world, and for many reasons, it is a good country to live in. But for morality and the future longevity of culture and the godly parts of the world that we're trying to instill in uh, our children and our families, America is effed. It is absolutely and utterly fucked. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Just a few days ago, I was at the park with my children, all right? It's cold here, brutally cold. So there's not a lot of people at the park right now. But when I'm at the playground with my kids, I observe other people, because that's just my character. I like to people watch. And I observe 
how people are interacting with their children. I observe couples and how they're interacting with each other. It's just what I do, okay? And within this short period of time, within the select few people that were there at this park, I, w I observed a lesbian couple, pink hair, holding hands, walking down the, down the playground. I was like, okay, interesting. And then I observed a half-naked man <laughs> running through freezing temperatures, running through just his boxer shorts, and has a speaker dangling from somewhere near his crotch, blaring and blasting country music. <sighs> as skinny as hell man. And I was like, okay, interesting. And he was walking through our playground where my kids were walking around. Half-naked man, right, with his balls hang <laughs> dangling through his boxer shorts. And then I was like, all right. And then what really broke me, broke the camel's back, I saw this father, kind father, playing with his son in the playground. He's like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. You know, one of those, one of those white dads, <laughs> which I am for sure, I'm that kind of guy. And he was like, oh, playing with this kid. I'm like, oh, that's cute. And then his son, who's probably four or five years old, this is not a, ch this is not a toddler, this is not a toddler. The son wants to play with my kids because my kids are going up and down the slide and, and they're being rowdy and all this and goofing around. My son, and his son wants to play with my kids. And so he starts going up the slide and the, and the father says, no, 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 we don't do that, Jamie. We don't do that. We don't play like that. And I was like, okay, that's enough. And then I was watching them more. And then his son has tried to climb up the, climb up the, uh, the jungle gym, right? Which is meant for climbing. And he's like, no, 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 you're too little for that. You're too little for that. How mother effing emasculating is, is it for a boy to be told by his father, you can't do something because you're not strong enough, because you can't, because it's too dangerous. And I was observing this. And after all these interactions, seeing the pink haired lesbian couple, seeing the guy running with his balls hanging out of his boxer shorts, seeing the father that is emasculating his son, I was like, America is fucked. This is what is going on in my mind while I was watching. America is utterly, absolutely, completely fucked. <laughs> completely. In what universe is this healthy that you can observe in just a, a 30 minute window of being at a playground, this level of just no, like no standard or value whatsoever about what is right and what is wrong. No direction, no clear guidance about how to live life, nothing. It's completely, utterly trash. It's completely like a clown culture that we live in. And it was just so depressing to see. This is the direction of where America is going. This is what will, will succumb to in America in the next 10, even 20 years, is that this will be commonplace. It will be normal to see a lesbian couple with pink hair holding hands through a, a public playground. And a man in his boxer shorts with his balls hanging out, blaring country music, walking through a public playground with my children walking through. And a father that is clearly, <laughs> obviously teaching his son day to day that you are not a man. You can't because you are not strong enough and it's too dangerous. And that is considered normal. Here's the thing, guys. If people are like, oh, you know, I I'm like this, but I'm trying to be better. If a father is like, you know what, I'm emasculating my son, but I'm noticing that I'm gonna try to be better. I'm gonna work on this. No, it is normal. It is acceptable behavior to do this stuff in America. And that's when you have lost the battle. That's when you've lost the game. And this is painful for me to watch. Why? Because I'm freaking American. I'm American through and through, born, raised, and bred here in the United States. I speak American. I think like an American. I look like an American. And I, I'm raising my kids here in America. And so it is painful for me to see. And it's confusing because I'm like, is this really where I want to be? Is this really where I want to raise my children? It's not just me raising my children, but when I raise my children here, there is a huge chance that my children will raise their children here because this is the environment, this is our country. And there's a large chance that my generations to come, my descendants will live here in America. Is that what I want for my legacy? No, it is not. If you ask me on a whim, do you like America and would you raise your kids here? I would say absolutely not. There are a hundred no, there are 200 countries that I would rather raise my kids in, a culture that I would rather be, people that I would rather interact, interact with than the United States of America, okay? But I still stay here and I choose to be here. I work from home, my wife does not work. I'm flexible, I can work anywhere in the world. I have three citizenships. I have three citizenships, guys. 
American, Japanese, British. My children all have dual citizenship. All right. All of my family is Japanese citizens. Passports. We can live, leave on a whim. We could get up tomorrow and leave America and never come back again. But I choose to stay here in the United States. Why? And I've asked this to myself, to my conscience, to God, to my wife. And the reason is because I believe there's a reason we're here. There's a reason beyond what I can see. There's a reason that we're here. And that reason is because I believe that we need to change this culture. The reason is because I think there's a potential in America. When we talk about greatest countries in the world, America has the greatest potential. Why? Because everyone is looking at America. Everyone is seeing what is America doing. And America is misusing it that and mistreating that power and that free will to do utmost degenerate things and teach this world ridiculous, ludicrous values that are portrayed by social media. All the most terrible things in the world are coming from America. Social media, arguably one of the most dangerous, detrimental things to, to our mental health is the phone use, is porn itself, right? That is a, that is a American thing, all right? I'm not even gonna get into that. Americans are severely addicted to porn and consuming and creating a pornography. America does the worst. I'm not saying that that is the culture's fault. I'm saying that that's our fault. That's, that's fucking my fault. That's my fault. And I take responsibility for that. And so the reason I'm here ultimately is because I need to take responsibility for this country. This is my country. And I'm not going to let it fall and slide into degeneracy just because I decided that I'm going to go live my life in a comfortable environment, a comfortable culture. America, this is what I say to people that are like, oh, America's great, it's fantastic, I want to live in America. This is what I say. America is a beautiful place to live externally, but internally, it's a shit show. <laughs> internally, it is struggling, and all you have to do is turn on the news for half a second, and you'll see clearly how much struggle is happening in America, how much division, how much pain, how much arguing, how much torment is happening in the hearts of Americans. You can see it in the, in the faces of people. Just drive around and look at the faces of people that are driving their cars. Anger, rage, outrage. It's plaguing our culture and it's seeping into the rest of the world. Why? Because people are watching America. The stuff you consume, whether you're American or not, the, the stuff you consume almost guarantee is going to be up from America. The YouTube, stuff on YouTube, the stuff from Instagram, the stuff on TikTok, it's from America. So the, the vast majority of the things that people are consuming in this, the time that they're spending online, which in reality is most of people's time, is spent consuming American stuff, American shit. And that's coming from us. That's me. And I'm not here to say that it's YouTube's fault, it's Instagram's fault. Those are just algorithms, guys. The news is just an algorithm to help portray the things that we are interested in. If we are not interested in it, it would not exist. If people were not interested in porn, porn would not exist. If people were not interested in, in outrageous news that fuels anger and hatred and all that stuff, it wouldn't exist. It only exists because we feed, feed the algorithm and the algorithm is feeding us back stuff. In essence, we are the algorithm. We are the shit. And for me, that's more empowering than it's not. That's more empowering than it is depressing. Because then it's like, oh, I take control. And if I don't consume this stuff, then the algorithm won't show it to me. And so when I open my feed to Instagram, to YouTube, whatever, it's gonna be nothing but fitness, making money, and having a goddamn good relationship with my wife. That's it. <laughs> None of this garbage is like, hey, I'm a, I'm a sexy woman that's trying to thirst trap you guys. And checking out my my OF no none of that shit none of it's existing on my feed anymore because I only feed it stuff that is good for me that I know will lead me in a good direction as a man so that's my rant on America we are absolutely and utterly fucked <laughs> and this is all that's going through my mind and I tried to justify it to kingdom come I would say you know what well, it's a good country because of this and this and this because I tried to justify my reason to live here in America because I don't want to move. But the reason I don't want to move is not because I'm lazy, but because this is my country. I want to take ownership and responsibility for it and I want to save it. And I will call it out on its bullshit, but I will say that that is my fault because that is my country. This is my culture. And when I go to the park and I look around, all I can think is, this is sad. And guys, before you say I'm an unloving, homophobic person that doesn't like, like gay people or lesbian people, shut up, okay? Shut up. You don't know me. I love people. 
I love people. I love every single motherfucking gay person on the planet, just as God does, and I do my best. Will I support their behavior? No, I will not. The thing about this couple that I saw in the park is that you look at a couple like that, who is telling them, if you wanna be lesbian and hold your hands with your wife or girlfriend in the park, sure, go ahead, whatever. But the fact that they both have to have pink hair and both have to be overweight and both have to have earrings and piercings all over their face and ears, there's a point where you have to go, is that really genuinely being lesbian? There's a point where you have to go, is that truly what it means to be a homosexual or is it somehow fueled by some kind of media portrayal? Is there something that they're learning from the culture or media? It's not, it's completely and utterly because that's the media that they consume. Those are the people that they are surrounding with themselves and they will say, oh, I am unique. I am a unique person. You are not unique. You're like every other person that is doing the same thing. If you wanna be truly unique, then live into and step into the God-given feminine person that you are. If you wanna be unique, ask yourself, who am I truly? Sincerely, who am I as a person? And step into that, stand into that, into that lean into that and let that be who you are. If I see a lesbian couple, that is feminine, genuinely feminine, and they don't have pink hair, and they're not covered in tattoos all over their arms and their neck and their face, I will say, you know what? Good for them. Good for them. They're not just being like every other clown person that's just pretending like they're unique but actually is just the same as everyone. Because guess what? If you want to be unique, it means you're not like everybody else. You are special in your own right. You know, I saw this guy running around with his balls hanging out, blasting country music. I was like, well, that's another guy that I've seen. Another young, crazy guy. If I see a father that's at the playground with his son and saying, you can't do that. No, 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 Jamie, we don't do that. We don't go up the slide because it's dangerous. I think, well, there's another guy, another father that is emasculating his son. And how sad is that that that's normal and that's acceptable? Okay, I'm gonna get off my high, ho high horse for a second, guys. Get off the soapbox. Uncle Benji, and I'll just say to you guys, I'm still in this process of figuring this out. I'm still in the process of figuring out what it means to be a true man, a real masculine man. I'm figuring it out. And I don't have all the answers, I don't. But I will spot out somebody that is being disingenuous in an instant. And that's what drives me crazy. So people are being disingenuous and not being true who they actually are, but they're only being that way because some person in some media form told them that that's what is correct, I'm not standing for it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I will call that out as BS. And I'm calling out America as BS right now. I'm calling out our culture as utterly and completely going in the wrong direction in a downward spiral into complete degenerate culture and lifestyle. And it has got to end. It's gotta end. If you agree with me on this, by the way, if you look at America and you're like, holy shit, we've got problems. Don't justify that. America has a lot of great stuff. Yes, absolutely. Freedom, yes, absolutely. Money, yes, external, beauty, fantastic. But internally, we're a shit show. And if you agree with this, let me know. Because I don't think I'm alone in this, in, this, in this opinion. I know that for a fact when I talk with other people from more conservative, conservative countries around Europe, Africa, most of the world actually, they look at America and they go, man, I'm so glad I don't want to live there. <laughs> I'm so glad I am not stuck in that culture, the clown culture. Whew. Do we have amazing things, amazing people? Yes, absolutely. But they're not raising, they're not rising to the top. They're not being highlighted by the media. And this is what I got to stop. And that's why I started doing these videos. Cause I was like, we're not highlight. We got, we got to get together, men of God, people of faith that are truly standing for something valuable in their lives and we got to get them together and create something that is worth sharing with our children people that focus on god faith marriage children legacy true legacy and lineage even if we're not perfect i've struggled with a lot of shit guys trust me as you can tell i have a mouth like a korean sailor which means i curse a lot <laughs> Oh, I struggle a lot sometimes with anger, with my kids and impatience. And I work on that and I acknowledge it and I admit to it. I struggle a lot sometimes with being lazy and I struggle a lot 
I have struggled a lot with social media, porn use. I've given that shit up because it has not served me well. And I'm on a mission to help people do the same. Guys, I love you so much for being with me on this journey. And I will see you in the next episode. See you there. <laughs> Woo! 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 Woo!